What it do, Faith Chapel students? My name is Roger Parker Jr. and I'll be the MC for today. Now you may be wondering, why am I in a car? Well, I just want to give you an example that God can meet you anywhere that you are. Whether you're in your room, whether you are in a bathroom, whether you're in a kitchen or whether you are in a car, God will meet where you are. Somebody put a clap emoji in the chat to let yourself know that God will meet you wherever you are. We're so glad you are here on behalf of Minister Alondio and Dr. Angela Hill. We would like to say welcome to Faith Chapel Students. It's going to be a great time. Are you excited? If you're excited, put some fire emojis in the chat. Let's put some fire emojis in the chat now because we're about to come with some heat. We're back again for part three. How y'all been doing though? How y'all been doing with uh, treating people? How has it been going? Like, has it been a little challenging for you? Have you been paying attention to the words that you say to others? Or have you been intentional about the words that others have been saying to you? Where 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 are you? Like, where are you um at this moment as it relates to this series? Just 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 where are you, right? Where are you? Like, what's been going on with you? Like, what what's been kind of happening? Um, I pray that it's been a blessing to you. It's it, it's definitely been a blessing to me. It's definitely been a blessing to me. I, you know, um, it's 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 so good to know that the Bible is full of practical advice to help us right now. You see, I didn't say to help you. I said to help us. The Bible is full of practical advice to help us right now. So we 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 have for the past two weeks we've been going through proverbs, um, and I'm like, ooh, like I've read through proverbs over and over and over and over and over and over before, and I'm getting even some more things out now that I didn't get before. That's why it's so important to not just say, well, I read that verse before. I read that scripture before. I read the Bible before. Mm -mm. The Bible is a living book. It's a live book. It's a book that's ever living. It's, and what that mean, what I mean by that is you can read it today and get one thing, and then you can read it again the next day, and something else can come out that's different from what you got the day before the bible is a living book it's a living book the word of god is alive it's living it's sharp it's 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 powerful and so you want to make sure that you allow the word of god to direct your life direct your 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 friendships direct your relationships direct how you engage with people the word of god will protect you from from the wrong people the word of god will protect you from people that you shouldn't be around the word of god is like a it will be a boundary for you um so that you don't go too far to the left you don't go too far to the right you stay within the boundaries of the guide of the word of God, the guidelines of the word of God. The word of God will protect you throughout your whole life. The word of God. So you want to make sure you lean into God's word, God's word. There, there, there's, there's, there's so many people out there that, that has they 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 tell you to do what you want to do that's wisdom w i s d u m b wisdom you do what you feel like you want to do wisdom you got a lot of that kind of stuff going on and so now you you get mad when people do what they want to do and it's destroying other people is hurting other people because they doing what they want to do, but you didn't create it. This, this thing outside of these guidelines of the word of God 
and you got a lot of dumb things happening that shouldn't be happening because it's outside of the wisdom of God. God has wisdom, W-I-S-D-O-M, to help guide our lives in a way that will cause us to live in a way that nobody else can has lived or or um, or or um, choose to live. If you choose His way, there's life and peace. But if you choose your way, there's death and there's cursing. And then he says, you choose. So he he's not forcing you to do it. But he is saying, he's not, think about it. God been around before anything. So somebody who just got on the earth, and they could be 90 years old, but they telling you, baby, you better live your life to like you want to live it. They only been here 90 years, but God been here forever. So who should we listen to? I'm just saying. If the 90-year-old is not given the wisdom from God, who should we listen to? I'm just saying. But hey, I'm so glad you back for week number three. And we about to jump in because these words are so important. All right, they're so important. So I want to ask you this. What is one thing that you could do today to change the words you speak and how you speak them? Think about that as we go through these next group of um, word, um, scriptures from Proverbs. Okay. All right. Think of one thing. All right. Think before you speak. <laughs> think before you speak. All right. Think before you speak. All right. So Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23, NLT says this, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. And you will stay out of trouble. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, watch your own tongue. Watch your own tongue. Because see, you can't control what somebody else's mouth does. You can't control what somebody else say. But you can watch your own tongue. You can watch your own words. You can watch your own mouth. Watch your own tongue and keep your mouth shut. Shut up. I ain't tell you shut up. But, it, but the Bible did. The Bible said, shut up. Watch your, see, some of, see, and see, you be like, so some of y'all like, well, I ain't talking, but I'm, I'm texting. All right, stop your fingers from moving on that text or stop your fingers from typing on social media, some that, watch your own tongue and stay out of trouble. Sometimes we in trouble because we talking too much. We in trouble because we saying too much. How many of y'all got to know some people that they talk too much and they just get themselves in trouble? How many of y'all know some people like that? How many of y'all like that? How many of you all are like that? Just talk too much and you get yourself in trouble. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth closed. Somebody saying something negative about somebody, shut up, don't you say nothing. Proverbs said, watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Somebody come to you and say, did you hear about such and such? This is what you do. Did you hear about such and such? Did you hear me? Did you hear about such and such? Did you, bruh, did you hear me? Did you hear about such and such? See, here's the deal. Proverbs didn't say you ain't want to hear. 
It didn't say you didn't want to hear it. It didn't say you didn't want to come in on it. But it did say this. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and stay out of trouble. Sometimes when somebody's saying something, you need to just close your mouth. Not sometimes. they saying something, close your mouth and walk away. And they may be walking. Because see, at the end of the day, if somebody takes you and say, did you hear about such and such? You might as well not even respond back. Because see, if you respond back, if you don't, just don't respond back. Did you hear about such such? Don't comment, don't respond. They text you again. Did you get my first text? Don't comment, don't respond. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Wisdom is trying to help us here. All right. <laughs> oh, I can go into this one. This one. Because you need to stay out. Some of y'all got in trouble because you up there then got then engaged in some conversations that you shouldn't have engaged in and got into trouble. Keep your mouth shut. All right. Um, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 18. Proverbs 17, verse 18. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Now, on the most basic level, Proverbs saying, if you ain't smart, that's what Proverbs said. <laughs> this is what Solomon is saying. If you ain't even smart, look, if you keep your mouth closed, you consider wise. And you're deemed intelligent. So, on this most basic level, if you want to be considered wise, just, just keep your mouth close. Don't say nothing and walk away from people kind of trying to engage, cause you to engage in some negativity. Walk away. Yeah, I, I would encourage you to leave and leave fast, right? All right. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. It says this, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. Ooh, he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. This is so, so good, y'all. This is so good. Whoever guards his mouth. See, you got to guard your own mouth. Your mama can't guard your mouth for you. Your daddy can't guard your mouth for you. You got to guard your own mouth and you preserve, you preserve, you preserve your life. You preserve your life. You, you make sure your reputation is good. You see that going back when I said that in lesson one, when I was talking about that person who was in high authority or high position and how they, they are not going to communicate, um, <clears throat> They're not going to allow anyone on their team who can't guard their mouth. They're not going to allow anybody um, um, in their circle who can't guard their mouth because of their position and where their, their, their place is and how anybody and anything can come at them based on what somebody else says because they uh, trust them and they can't guard their mouth. They can't guard their mouth. They can't guard what they say on social media. They 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 don't have a good, they don't have boundaries themselves. Oh no, nah. I, I don't want you on my team either. Like if you if you can't control your attitude, you can't control your words, you always try to try to tr always want to get some juicy gossip out about somebody or put something out on somebody. I don't want you on my team either. I'm I'm just like that that person in a high position. No, because if you can't guard yourself, you then what's going if you can't guard your your own mouth, what you will do is you will then uh, if I say something wrong, do something wrong, you going to put that out there against me and I don't want you on my team either. I'm, I'm, I, I feel what that person was saying, and I get it. What does that mean? I, I'm mad at you, or no? I ain't mad at you because you're doing you. You're doing what you want to do. But if you choose to do that, then I have to choose. I have to choose what's gonna make make me 
um, have some safety and some boundaries as well. So I have to choose. So you do you, you do you. If that's who you want to be or if that's who you want to become, then you go that direction. But I don't want you on my team. I don't want you on my team. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. And so I get that. And you have to do that too. You you have to watch how people, you have to watch those, when school, school starts back in a couple of weeks, y'all, listen, you, you got to watch what people are doing and how they're talking and what they're saying. And you got to be like, oh, no, nah, I can't have you in my circle. Mm-mm. Some of them saying that about y'all. No, nah, I don't. And you're Christian. You in the church. And some of them saying that about you. Mm-mm, nah, I can't tell them that. I can't tell them anything. They go to church. They they talk about they this and that. And they talk about other people. Oh, no, nah, I can't have them. No, nah, they can't even guard their mouth. They always want to say something. They, somebody told them something about what they had going on. They went about and told somebody else and Oh, no, I can't have them in my circle. That is not good. That's not good. We should be different. It says, he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. You you open your lips on something that someone has said to you. It, It comes to ruin. Your reputation starts going in a different direction. Is that what you want? A good name is rather to be chosen. A good name, a good reputation, a good reputation. And that reputation includes how you talk and how you speak and what you say. Your reputation includes your words. Look, Proverbs, oh, we're just going down this road right here. Oof. Proverbs 10, 19 says this. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Too much talk. If somebody always talking, always talking, it's going to lead to sin because then you're going to get over to gossiping. Always talking. It's going to lead to sin and it's going to get over to gossiping and then you're going to get over to saying stuff you shouldn't be saying. You're going to get over to Proverbs tells us be sensible. Talk. Talk. Right? And then shut your mouth. Talk, but just shut your mouth. But too much talk. And so let me ask you this question. How many of y'all know some people, they just talk all the time. They always text it every time. They they texting all the time. All the time. Like they, they always, they text you when you get up. They text you before you go to bed. They text. You talking to me too much. <laughs> You're talking. And then, you know, and too much talk about the wrong thing leads to sin. Sometimes we just just do what Proverbs tells us, the wisdom of God that is here telling us, hey, just shut your mouth. Just be sensible and shut your mouth. Right. Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 27 says this. And, and uh, we're giving you all these scriptures because We want you to see the importance of our words. Your words, they go before you. When you speak, what you text, what you type, what you put out there, they go before you. So before somebody can even know you, they've already researched what you you are saying. And it matters. Some people do not get jobs, good paying jobs, because of the way they 
use their words. People don't want people on their team who are negative, who use cuss words, who use foul language, who use perverse words, who use um, all this neck. People, they don't want you on their team. And then if you get on their team and you 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 some kind of way sneak in and get in and get on the team and you continue that behavior, more than likely they trying to get you up off of their team. Watch your words, y'all. Watch your words. Proverbs 17, 27 says this. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. There we go again. Keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. And we go again. Watch your own words and keep your mouth shut. That's Proverbs 17, 27. And Proverbs 15, 28 says this, the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words. Listen, y'all. Listen. We got to be different. We got to be different. The mouth, the, the godly does this. The heart of the godly. The heart of the godly. The heart of the one who really pursue pursuing God. The heart of the one. And see, pursuing God is just not a one day, one hour, one minute thing. A, a heart that pursues God is a heart that's pursuing him throughout the day. It's a heart that's pursuing him with, that's considering every word that come out of their mouth by filtering it through God's word. That's the heart of the God. The heart of the godly is not allowing their emotions to dictate how they're going to act or how they're going to move forward. The heart of the godly makes sure that they filter those words, their, 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 what they're speaking, what they're saying. They're filtering those things through how uh, they're filtering those things through the word of God. So the heart of the godly uh, and and if and if your heart is being challenged uh, with different disappointments or different things that 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 you may be feeling, if your heart is being challenged with those different things, then you have to filter that through the Word of God, and you have to say, "Okay, God, I'm feeling a certain kind of way right now. I'm feeling sad, or I'm feeling disappointed, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that," and um, and I I, I and I. I know that I don't need to say anything um, negative about somebody um, who has done this to me, Uh, but I need to go to someone who can really help me like, like, like uh, my parents or like uh, maybe an aunt or an uncle or um, a, 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 cousin or, or or a safe place I can go to share so that I don't say anything wicked or evil words with my mouth that can cause more damage. See, it's, 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 it's that type of thing you want to make sure you choose to operate out of a heart that is godly because the heart of the godly they think before they speak. And that's what we want to help you with, to think before you speak. It's very, 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 very important to do that. Now, now sometimes that can be in- incredibly hard to do. Um, especially when you just like, oh, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get them back for what they did, what they said. I'm, I'm, I'm about to go in on them. 
But that's where you have to invite the Holy Spirit into that place that has caused your heart to kind of be a be in another space. Because we want to make sure that our heart, that our heart is a heart that represents God. He, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. He, he will be with you. And he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. But you must allow the Holy Spirit to help you when your words are wanting to go in a different direction. And when your words are trying to cause, when your words are wanting to be destructive and when your words are wanting to bring death, you got to ask the Holy Spirit to help you you gotta you have to have the right friends around you you got to have the right friends around you that will help you with the right words to say you don't need friends that be like yeah let's go get them oh yeah we need to do this we need you don't need to be like that that, that ain't that's not that's not cool it's not cool. No, that's where people get in trouble. And, and they think in their hip and no, 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 no. Does it feel bad the way they did? Yeah. Do we need to address what took place? Yes. But do we need to address it like that? No. Not like that. But it does need to be addressed. So we have to submit to God and to his leading and he will help us to address it in a way that will make us still look good and make him look good words words is very important how you use your words and how we treat people god bless you all and I, I pray that you have an amazing rest of the day. God bless you. With me being in a car, it's so symbolic because a car is a source. Like it's a source, meaning you can get in the car and the car will take you everywhere you need to go. Whatever destination you need to go, the car will take you there. The car will guide you to every area that you need to go to. And there's a God who wants to be the source of your life to guide you to every area, to every destination he has for you because he loves you and he cares for you. However, sin blocks us from having a true relationship with God. However, the source, Jesus Christ came into the earth died on the cross for our sins so we could have eternal life. If you'd like to receive Christ right now, we are going to do a simple prayer so you can have the source to guide you in your life. So repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you love me. I believe that you lived a sinless life, died on the cross for my sins. I want to be right with you, God. I turn to you and confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm honking my horn because I'm excited. Congratulations if you just received Christ or if you rededicated your life to Christ. Congratulations. We are so excited for you. Put some clap emojis in the chat right now. Now, if you just received Christ or rededicated your life back to Christ, make sure you text the name Faith Chapel to 94000. That's 94000. Congratulations, man. I'm honking for you. Yeah! All right, so now we are transitioning into our time of tithes and offerings. 
So you got your tithes and offering ready? Are you ready to give? Because now it's time to give and keep expanding the faith that God has placed within you. Malachi 3.10, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and there will be meat in my house. And I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You want a blessing? You want a blessing? Me too. Me too. And that's why we give. So repeat this after me. Say, I am a giver. I receive abundance. I receive abundance. In Jesus name. Amen. Now there are four ways to give. If you would like to give via the app. You can. If you like to give via online, you can. If you would like to give through mail, you can. And if you would like to give via text, you can. So you got those four ways. Go ahead and take care of that and be blessed in your giving. See y'all.